hello and welcome again so now today we are moving forward to our page 142 we have previously discussed about these nice area species now we are on same page 142 and we will be discussing our important topic about hemophilus influenzae hemophilus influenzae do not confuse with influenza which is a virus actually hemophilus influenzae is a bacteria we are talking about the bacterial infection that is gram negative bacilli which actually fall under the coco bacilli group so these are the gram negative bacilli that transmit through the aerosol transmission okay and they are not they have two type non type a that is un encapsulated strain are the most common cause of mucosal infection like those which are not capsulated they will cause the infection like otitis media conjunctivitis and bronchitis so these are the less virulent state they are not capsulated uncapsulated you can say okay and that is called non type a bubble there is another type which is known as the type a bubble or say capsulated and that cause the inf invasive infection mainly like they will cause acute epiglottitis they will cause many they will cause meningitis and other features okay they have an important enzyme called, called IgA protease. In the previous lecture also, I have already discussed repeatedly this, that our all mucosal surfaces, that may be a GI tract, that may be a respiratory tract, that may be a urinary genitourine tract. There, we have a protective layer of immunoglobin A. So the, what they do, they protect from each and every bacteria to get us infected. So they prevent us from getting infection. And this enzyme this IGA protease is a breakdown that will going to be a break that is going to break down our that protection layer that immunoglobin a which is as a which is lying as a paste over our mucosal surface of your respiratory tract gi tract and genitourinary tract so since we are talking about the hemophilus influenzae they are causing the disease mainly of your respiratory tract and in respiratory tract there is immunoglobin a paste lying over all the mucosal surface when this enzyme will be produced by the bacteria then that will break down that could that will evade that protective layer and the bacteria will can easily enter into our epithelial cell and then cause us the infection so the, any organism which is mainly responsible for causing our respiratory tract or gi tract infection they needs to be what they need to be understand they need they need to be they need to be should actually Sorry. they need to actually contain this immunoglobin A protease to cause us the infection okay now moving forward there will be the like uh, chocolate agar they can culture so where we can culture this organism we can culture this organism on the chocolate agar which contains the factor V and factor X that is NAD and X for the growth can also be grown with staph aureus which provide V factor via RBC hemolysis so let me explain one more thing that hemophilus influenzae is the fastidious organism means they require the special requirement for its growth they cannot be grown easily in the normal media like you cannot grow in the nutrient agar you cannot grow in the molar lilton agar you cannot grow on the blood agar you can only grow in the media which contain both x and v factor x is the m factor v is the nuclear nad factor so both factor is required and this both factor is present only in the chocolate agar what is chocolate agar chocolate agar is the uh, heated form when we when you initially form a basic media then we put a blood then become a blood agar when you heat that media then blood get lice and then it become in chocolate color so this is known as chocolate agar when we heat the blood agar what happened at 70 degrees celsius the rbc get brushed they got lysed and the factor b in RBC, we already have this X factor. So in blood agar, there is X, but there is no V factor. So when we heat that blood agar, the V factor, the NAD that is present inside the RBC come out and that is present in chocolate agar. So the media which contains this X and V factor will easily grow the hemophilus influenzae. Even blood agar, 
the hem is there but there is no v factor any defector so what happened we can lyse the rbc and rbc can be lysed by the staphylococcus aureus you remember they are the beta hemolytic organism they will lyse the rbc they will completely lyse the organism like streptococcus pyrogen streptococcus agalaxy and the staphylococcus aureus so these are the beta hemolytic organism they will completely lyse the rbc and since there will be the lysis of the rbc the nad factor will be released so in the presence of the staphylococcus aureus amphalous influenza organ uh, can be grown in blood agar as well. Hemophilus causes the disease like epiglottitis, endoscopic appearance. You can see over here. This is the uh, this is the picture of cherry red appearance of this uh, epiglottis. That is endoscopic appearance, and they, that can be cherry red in children. And there is the thumb sign on the lateral neck of chest tract and then neck, lateral neck x-ray so when you do do a lateral view x-ray of your neck then you can see this is this part this part is actually appears as like a thumb so this is the thumb sign why it is has been appear like this if you do my x-ray or your x-ray then you will not found this type of structure why because it is not swollen but in the when you have a epiglottitis due to this hemophilus influenzae type b that is the typeable means capsulated one then this due to the swelling due to the um, influx of the blood they are become cerebrate appearance and as well as swollen so they appear on the x-ray as the thumb sign so you can remember this is just like a thumb there is a gap between both sides and there is a thumb appearance so epiglottitis thumb thumb appearance on the lateral chest lateral neck x-ray and in endoscopy or you can see the cerebrate appearance they are also responsible for meningitis and pneumonia they are like otitis media and conjunctivitis and bronchitis will cause by the non typeable strain that is non capsulated strain the vaccine contains a type b capsular polysaccharide that is the ribotyl phosphate conjugated to diphtheria toxin and other protein that is given between the age of 2 to 18 month look this vaccine that has the this is the capsular bacteria so we put the capsule into the vaccine but since they are in nature is polyribocytyl phosphate so there is only the ribose sugar is only there you have to understand that any material that trigger our immune cell if it is a protein that that will trigger the t cell that will form the memory cell and then the memory cell will circulate in our body if there is due to other like carbohydrate and lipids then memory cell will not be formed so if you give a vaccine but the they will trigger the immune system but no memory cell will form then it is useless the main role of the vaccine is to produce antibody in your body for a prolonged period of time since there will be no memory cell if there is no protein conjugate then there is no chance of forming memory cell inside the body because only protein nature will be processed by the this msc class 2 leading leading to this uh, t cell activation that will lead to the uh, activation of the b cell and the formation of the plasma cell and antibody but the formation of mem memory cell only occur by those antigen that is protein in nature so what will happen? okay no problem it is not protein nature there is no problem at all we will conjugate with that protein so we'll conjugate this polyribocytal phosphate with a protein component suppose diphtheria toxoid or other protein and then this complex will be a like a protein antigen and so a protein antigen exposed to your body then they will form the memory cell and in this way vaccine will have a long term protection so any vaccine if they are not initially protein nature we usually what we do we conjugate with that vaccine with the protein so that we will have the memory cell and we have the long-term immunity they can give in at the age between 2 and 18 month of age does not cause the flu this is not a virus this is a bacterial infection so flu is caused by the only the influenza virus and treatment since it is a bacterial infection bacterial treatment can be amoxic clab amoxicillin plus cl clabonic acid for mucosal infection if there is meningitis we can go for the ceftriaxone and rifampicin is given for the prophylaxis of close contact to remove the if there is a colonizer we can give rifampicin okay so this is the just an overview a revision section from the usmle step 1 2021 microbiological section where we are revising this uh, bacteria let's move on a little bit uh, about some of the picture to understand it more detail so you can see over here this is the hemophilus influenzae that is formerly called as the fifth bacilli or bacillus influenzae is a gram negative cocoa bacilli facultative anaerobic capnophilic pathogenic bacteria of the family pasteurization 
Hemophilus influenzae were first described by 19, 1892 by Richard Pfeffer during the influenza pandemic. So initially, we thought that influenza pandemic was due to this bacteria, Hemophilus influenzae. You can see this chocolate agar where this bacteria has grown. But later we found that it was not like the bacteria, not the bacterial, the pandemic was due to the virus. And we found that in some of the patients, there was also this post-viral bacterial infection. So in, in initially, the influenza pandemic was thought to be due to this bacteria but actually this was due to the a different class of viruses so there was due to the rna viruses not due to the bacteria now coming to the now coming to the point what are the disease you can see this uh, growth and chocolate agar and the di disease you can easily see over there this is the meningitis by type b means capsulated otitis media by non tapable means non capsulated sinusitis by non tapable means non capsulated epiglottitis by type b means capsulated uh, hemophilus influenzae type b will cause this epiglottitis trachobronchitis by non tapable means non capsulated bacteremia by typeable that means capsulated will cause the bacteria bacteremia pneumonia even will cause by the non typeable so non typeable are less pathogenic but they will cause the disease Type level are pathogenic, more pathogenic, and they will going to cause epiglyteritis, and this is acute emergency. Even patient can have a respiratory problem, meningitis, this is also an emergency. Bacteremia is also an emergency. If you will not treat, the patient will going to die. Now coming to the point of X and B factor, we have talked that this organism will only grow on the chocolate agar. They cannot be grown on the blood agar. If we want to grow on the blood agar, then we have to initially grow with this Staphylococcus aureus. We will put a Staphylococcus aureus and then inoculate where the Staph aureus will grow. This will lyse the RBC and once the RBC is lysed, then the, R the V factor will be released and there is both X was initially present in the blood agar. Now V factor is also there. So nearby this Staph aureus, there will be the growth of this Hemophilus influenzae due to the presence of the both factor and this is known as the satellitism. Now we can grow this organism again in a different media, normal media by providing additionally this factor. You can see there is a V factor, there is a X factor and there is the XV factor. Since this organism requires both factor X and B, I cannot grow only by X or V factor. So we have to remember, okay, you, see, you can see this is a Mullen Hilton agar where we can see there is a V factor but there is no growth around it. There can be a growth around the uh, X and V only. So this is the hemophilus influenzae. If there is growth on the X and X and B, this means this required only X factor. And this is the another species of the hemophilus influenzae. Let me confirm over here. You can see over there, there is a V factor, there is X factor, and there is both XV factor. There is no growth around the X factor. There is no growth around the V factor. But where both factor X and V both are present, there is a growth around that means this is the hemophilus influenzae and that requires both factor for growth that is proof over here and if you want to grow the organism you have to culture that is called long culture on a media and then put the the factor x factor v factor dix if you put together then the growth will be around that and it will be then you can confirm your identification of hemophilus influenzae now let's also revise our kaplan book okay so talking about the hemophilus influenzae, let me go over the pathogenesis. So hemophilus influenzae, what is the distinguished feature? It is an encapsulated gram-negative bacteria. 90% of the invasive disease will cause as the capsular hemophilus influenzae type B1. Requires growth factor X and V. We already have discussed in a long, uh, long discussion that X factor is hem, B factor is NAD for growth on a nutrient agar. And in a blood agar, they will require the NAD factor as well. So, star aureus. So, star on star blood agar. If we grow the, if you grow, it will grow near the star aureus where star aureus will lysis the RBC. This is known as the satellite phenomena. They can easily grow on the chocolate agar because chocolate agar provide both X and V factor. The key, key vineyard is there. Uh, the patient will develop the disease only those who have unvaccinated children between three months to two years and they will develop meningitis, pneumonia, epiglottitis. A smoker with the COPD will develop bronchitis and pneumonia. These are the gram negative required X and V factor. So one thing you have to remember, we get this, um, we get vaccinated against this bacteria in the childhood, in the early part of our life. So those people who are unvaccinated will only develop this disease. So reservoir, there are the human nasopharynx transmission by respiratory droplet pathogenesis. They have contained the 
कैप्सूल दैट इज पोलिसक्रेट कैप्सूल टाइप बी कैप्सूल दे कैप्सूल इज इम्पोर्टेंट फॉर डायग्नोसिस एज वेल एंड दे प्ले रोल फॉर द इनिबिसिंग द फैगोसाइटोसिस एज वेल एज दे हैव एन अदर फैक्टर दैट इज आई जी प्रोटीएस आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस एनी ऑर्गेनिजम दैट इज गोइंग टू कॉज रेस्पिरेटरी और जी अट्रैक दे नीड टू हैव दिस इंजाम टू वेयर द प्रोटेक्टिव लेयर एंड रिस्ट टू आवर इपिथेलियल सेल डिजीज दे डेवलप मेनिजाइटिस दे आर कॉमन इन इपिडेमिक आउटब्रेक अगर इन अनवैक्सिनेटेड चिल्ड्रेन एज बिटवीन थ्री मंथस टू टू इयर आफ्टर एन मेटरनल एंड एंटीबॉडी हेज वेन एंड बिफोर इम्यून रिस्पॉन्स ऑफ चाइल्ड इज एडुकेट सो दिस इज द ट्रांजिशन पीरियड वेन मर्दर एंटीबॉडी इज नाउ गोइंग टू फिनिश गोइंग टू वेन इन द बेबी एंड पेशेंट हेज ऑलरेडी नॉट डेवलप द एडल्ट इम्यूनिटी सो इन दैट पीरियड ऑफ टाइम दे आर गोइंग टू बी गेट इन्फेक्टेड इफ दे आर नॉट वैक्सीनेटेड so up to 1990 hemophilus influenzae was the most common cause of meningitis age 1 to 5 it is still a problem child less than 2 and not in non vaccinated people otitis media is usually caused by non typical strain bronchitis exacerbation of acute bronchitis in a smoker with copd pneumonia is developed in 1 to 12 uh, 124 month rare in vaccinated children but common in a smoker epiglottitis rare in vaccinated children but it is a mean acute emergency and this can occur by hemophilus influenzae type b if a patient is not vaccinated okay hemophilus influenzae as major cause of death diagnosis we can diagnose this organism by blood or csf culture on chocolate agar you have to culture on a chocolate agar because blood agar there is only x factor and other media both doesn't have so we, the suitable media is chocolate agar once it has grown on the chocolate agar to confirm it we can put it x and f factor like dix1 which i have shown and then confirm in the molar return agar or neutron agar as well or for further testing at the satellitism mechanism we can put star for its growth and then in in inoculate as on beside that and then the growth can be seen of hemophilus influenzae on blood agar also but if you they are asking where you will culture the organism you will culture on the chocolate agar because chocolate agar contain both x and v factor okay we can also do pcr we can do antigen detection by latex agglutination test treatment can be ceftriaxone or cefotaxime for empirical therapy of meningitis if they are have nasal carrier we can use rifampicin to remove the colonization prevention can be done by the conjugate capsular polysaccharide protein derived vaccine vaccine effective to prevent type b diseases they contain polyribotyl capsule conjugated to the protein protein of diphtheria toxoid or nigeria meningitis outer membrane protein making a t cell dependent vaccine so i have already told you if they are not a protein in nature they will not depend on the t cell mediated immunity and there will no memory cell so the antibody the vaccine will not work for a long period of time so to make it to work for a long period of time we should conjugate with the protein and then only make and then only we give the vaccine to the baby so there will be a formation of memory cell and there will be a long term protection the vaccine can be given at 2 4 and 6 month booster at 15 month 95% is uh, is effective rifampicin reduce the oropharyngeal colonization and prevent meningitis in unvaccinated or close contact less than 2 years so what we are what we have learned that hemophilus influenzae is an important bug they are responsible there are two type capsulated and non capsulated capsulated is responsible epiglottitis meningitis this two and bacteremia non type people can cause this sinusitis conjunctivitis bronchitis even pneumonia so we can understand what